Dear students, good evening. Welcome to Law Excellence IAS. Let us do the editorial analysis for today, that is 25th and 26th November 2022. The first article, a word of advice on OTT and the draft telecom bill. What happened in the draft telecom bill is this. Over the counter, over the top platforms, OTT platforms were also included along with telecommunications. Now, this article's major point of argument is OTTs and telecom service providers, they are not one and the same. Can you say WhatsApp and Airtel, can they be brought under the same regulation? That is the question essentially asked in this article. In this case, telecom operators and OTT platforms, they are quite different with regard to the services they provide for. Airtel is like a carriage, a conduit. On this conduit, data is transferred. It provides for the transfer of data. On this, the built-up is called service. The service is over the top or WhatsApp or whatever it is. This is the service which is built over the data. So that's why they are not one and the same. Why? When it is been, bill is been framed, the reason why they brought them together is um, the principle applied is same service shall be fall, shall follow the same rules. If the service is same, rules have to be the same. Now, if you clearly observe, they are not one and the same. It means that they shall have different treatment. Second thing is, telecom services are under license Raj. If you talk about Airtel, Vodafone, all these need licenses to operate. The premise here is, entire telecom sector belongs to the government. License of the government is required for a private player to enter in. In this case, lot of control of the government is exercised over here. If you go to OTT, here open for entry, but they shall not violate certain rules. It means there are no licenses required. Once they enter in, they are supposed to follow certain rules. This is what is, they are regulations. So there is license Raj over here. There are regulations in OTT. In, for the OTT, if you bring license Raj as like uh, telecommunications, obviously OTT is going to suffer from lack of innovation. Wherever the license comes up, that's where the innovation suffers. The license Raj is antithetical to innovation. Second, these rules apply to OTTs in India or OTTs across the world. They apply towards only that are originating in India. Obviously, our OTT platforms will not be able to compete with the global platforms. So, it may go against innovation. Same service, same rules will not apply because they are different services. And the third thing is, OTT platforms in India, they need to work on innovation. They need to get the funds from the venture capitalists. In these cases, they have to compete. That the open field, open data will help them to compete. Next is opening stance. You know, a trade pact is signed by our government after a gap of almost few of a decade. So, Australia is the country with which we signed a free trade agreement. This is called Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement. Why it is important? India is in talks with EU. It is also in talks with uh, UK, Canada, all these developed countries to make a trade pact. But the problem is, Spirits, motor vehicles, on this India wants to impose tariffs, but those countries are not willing to. The same problems also existed with Australia. Today, a framework has been developed of how to deal with the trade agreements related to developed countries when we signed this agreement. So, a framework is ready. Already, Australia, India are part of three other agreements. One is Quad, you know, USA. India, Australia, Japan are part of it, Indo-Pacific Economic Forum, and third, Trilateral Supply Chain Resilience Initiative. In this, India, Australia are already parts. In this case, India aims to achieve $30 billion of international trade in the next five years. What is the best approach? To collaborate with as many countries as possible. Second is, if you see Australia, it is very much worried about China's weaponization of trade. 
Weaponization of trade is a becoming a very popular word. Remember that. It means trade is used for geopolitical benefits by China. In this context, many of the companies are seeing alternate places to operate and they want to diversify their supply chains. This is providing opportunities to India. What do we call this as? India shoring. We call this as India shoring. And second, double taxation avoidance agreement etc. is also signed which will increase the profits to Indian companies. But what is the problem? When India signed the free trade agreement with ASEAN Japan, the trade was unfavorable to India. If trade has to become favorable to India, only way is India's productivity, efficiency of the industry has to go up, then only it can become successful. Disquiet in the Northeast, there is a fight which is going on between Assam and Meghalaya. Now see, Assam forest rangers have fired on the people from Meghalaya at the border area. Assam forest guards thought that these are the timber smugglers. Why these problems are coming repeatedly? One is border certainty, lack of border certainty. The word used is cartography issues, demarcation of the boundaries. Second, unscientifically, Assam, northeastern frontier province is divided into various states. The boundaries are more artificial. So that's why people unknowingly or knowingly they regularly cross the boundaries. This is the, these are the issues. The central government which is taking roots in northeast has to discuss with all the states and it has to solve the problems, border issues. Next, can poor countries effort to go green? Remember, developed countries have to pay for their historical responsibilities. And when we take the poor countries, these also have to initiate mitigation measures. There is no other choice for us. The reason is mitigation and then adaptation, loss and damages. We studied them in the last week meanings of this. When we compare the cost, mitigation is less than adaptation. Sorry, mitigation is less than adaptation and then adaptation is less than loss and damage. So, if you don't mitigate, you pay more in the next stage. If you don't adopt, you pay next in, much in the next stage. And as developing countries do not have capabilities to face this, they are going to be worst affected. So that's why we need to ensure that the developing countries or developed countries shall go for low carbon strategy. There is no other go for it. Then how this low carbon strategy has to be financed? And then what shall be the pace of shifting to this? The first issue is transition period. Let us take, I have a fossil fuel consuming car. If I have to shift to an electric car, obviously I have to spend some money, capital onto that. Do I have capabilities today? Probably not. But some mechanisms have to be devised in such a way that someone takes away my this car and pays to me to buy an electric car. Second, infrastructure. As developing country, India needs lot of infrastructure, road infrastructure, and then electricity infrastructure, etc. Any infrastructure creation for development is energy intensive. So that's where still the energy need to come, some energy is expected to come fossil fuels. And this transition phase is very critical. And next point is, the carbon space, we say, what is this carbon residual space? Whatever the leftover space, it has to be properly utilized. It means, now let's take we are around 1.1 degrees. We want to stop it by 1.5 degrees C. So it means 0.4 degrees temperature rise is only the carbon space available to us. This is a global common. This carbon space belongs to all the people. Then how much has to use as part of this global common? How much India has to use? The principle has to be fair share. Globally, how much is how, how much the UK is responsible, US is responsible, we have to calculate. And we need to see a fair share that has to come to every country to use the residual carbon space. That is the importance of this article. Riots at China's iPhone assembly plant. So why I am using this article? Whenever essay topic comes up, you can use this as an example. So democracy and communism. 
why the people's rights are important. So months together locking down the people in dormitories. Is this possible in a country such as India? In the Foxconn factories, the locking down of the employees, the workers over there has led to an agitation recently. So it explodes um, the using of cheap labor and exploitative practices of companies. This all talk about goes against the philosophy of corporate responsibility. Or iPhone has to employ only those partners who have respect for the human rights. This is what we can suggest for Russia's nuclear icebreakers. You know that Arctic. So Arctic Pole, the Russia is going for weaponization of it. So these icebreakers, they provide for the seamless access to Russia throughout the season into Arctic. So this weaponization of the poles is highly not recommended. So you can also use this as an example. Next, today's articles if you come. COP27 and ambiguity about responsibility. What is the biggest achievement of COP27? That is loss and damage. The loss and damage. When we talk about the loss and damage, how much finance is expected to come? $500 billion. By 2020, developed countries have promised $100 billion. By 2023, it is expected to start now. They thought that much will come from private sector, but it did not come. It did not come. Much from the private sector did not come. So in this context, this loss and damage, how it has to be taken up. So what responsibilities has to be taken by developed countries is the question. So COP27, creating a fund for rehabilitation, recovery is itself a, a good step. Second problem, second thing is, we have multilateral financial institutions, development banks. So COP27 recommended that these have to be taken into consideration. They have to actively contribute towards climate finance. And then developed and developing countries, they are making new partnerships in the climate finance. That is just energy transition partnerships. In the previous article, we thought that energy transition phase is the difficult phase. We have to move from fossil fuels to non-fossil fuels. In this case, just for transferring the energy sector from carbon rich to carbon poor, that's where developed countries are investing. That is one thing which we need to see as a new development. Sustainable urbanization, low carbon development, something which has to be devised, understood and developed. Sustainable urbanization, simple example, use public transport develop public transport. So obviously that urbanization is more sustainable, less vehicles on the road. And second, low carbon strategy. So renewable energy has to be promoted. And what I gave you the example before is the right for this. And these are the articles for today. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much.